When I was appointed as a lecturer in the year 2003, I've already done some work in, right from the undergraduate project work concerning the search of antimicrobial agents from natural products. At that level, I was able to establish the antimicrobial activity of the leaves of guava against wide range of antimicrobial agents, including bacteria and then fungi. Then I started my postgraduate program, that is a Master of Pharmacy, Master of Pharmacy program in pharmaceutics with specialization in pharmaceutical microbiology. My area of research was basically on the antimicrobial activities of some identified medicinal plants and their extracts and then the combination of them as whether they potentiated or the activities or the activities were antagonized. So based on that, my interest in searching for agents or anti-infectives required for the treatment of infections, both bacteria and fungal agents, was mooted. And I decided to go into the bioassay isolation and characterization of the active agents responsible for these antimicrobial properties. That motivated me to go into this field and the focus was on natural products for me to find out whether we can get or discover lead compounds and where possible lead therapies when it comes to antimicrobial agents from natural products, especially when, since our part of the world, especially in most developing countries, are endemic with infectious diseases. So we're trying to also, in our small way, trying to also contribute to the management of infections, which are very serious when it comes to our part of the world. That motivated me to go into the, the research area that I've been researching for the past almost 25 years. My search for anti-infective also led me to another area of research in, that is the search for agents for the management of wounds. So in addition to wounds, it also ended up in the inflammation aspect, that is pains, how natural products are used, that is including medicinal plants are used in managing first infections, that is the search for anti-infective. Second is the wound healing um, process, especially since most wounds, if they are only able to heal by themselves, will end up being chronic. And it's an area that is usually neglected. And I'm happy that now it is based on my research, uh, focus and publication in that area. This has gotten large number of researchers who, especially from Africa, who are and conducting research in the area of wound healing agents. And again, um, anti-inflammatory agents, that is natural products used for the management of various forms of pains experienced by humans. Start from more of the conceptualization aspect where we should have an open mind when it comes to research. And then base and if you've realized my research is anchored in the area of ethnopharmacological studies, where over a long period of time, sometimes centuries, where indigenous people have been using various forms of um, plant materials or herbs. For the, for the management of various types of diseases. So with this in mind, we wanted to validate the, the claims of some of these medicinal plants. And through our research, we've been able to confirm 
most of them otherwise others we've been able to find out other other aspect or properties that we need to look out for especially one of our publications that focus on mutagenicity which is a, a precursor of some form of cancers where some plant materials may contain mutagens which may trigger in, in some individuals may trigger or serve as a precursor for cancer um, diseases so we need to be careful when we are using these um, medicinal plants the second aspect is when we are doing research we use or we work together with our postgraduate students and even our undergraduate students who do their project work and for me the impact that we are we are able to make on them will help in the research that we are undertaking so for me i always take my postgraduate students including phd students mphil students msc students and even undergraduate project work students as the people who I can lead for us to come out with findings that will benefit mankind and also add on to knowledge. The third aspect that I can say about is more to do with collaborations. For instance, some of the research works that we've been able to conduct, we needed to rely on other partners, in, especially in the developed world, to help us to get to where we, we wanted to get to. I, had, I have had uh, collaborators in North America and Europe, and I'm still working with them. So I think collaboration, and then it within the country too, the other sister universities and then research institutions, I have collaborated with some of the researchers there with the aim of um, coming out with something that will add on to knowledge. And in most of the times, we will get to a stage where you have potential researchers or researchers coming to you based on your track record and the publication and knowledge that you have. So I think that that should be a key thing that we have to um, learn and then sustain it. Key that is more of the collaborations and networking aspect of research that should be projected. And I think if you are able to do that, it will help especially those in academia and research to do more and better research. Well, the, the most in, important thing for me is the, the impact that I'm making on individuals, especially my postgraduate students, my collaborators and my colleagues. That is what I want I want to be remembered for. And then the additional knowledge that we are trying to add on to existing knowledge when it comes to research and then publication. And at the end of the day, also the love and then the attention that we need to give to the people around us, be it your family, your staff, people that you come across. That is what I I want to, or over the years, I've been emphasizing on just trying to put a smile on somebody's face. Whether, especially when it comes to research, you can be in the lab for a number of periods or years. You are not able to get something, especially when it comes to postgraduate training. You are not able to, the student is unable to get something that is significant. As a mentor or a supervisor, you need to encourage the, the student and find ways of getting around whatever challenge that the students may be having. It may be logistical, it may be technical, whatever. By trying to help the, the, your mentees to get to where they want to be, for me, is my main focus. And this transcends even to my own colleagues. Um, through my collaboration with some of them, I've seen most of them rising. And for me, when I see them, I'm very, very happy with where they are getting to. I'm hoping that they will be able to do more than what some of us have been able to achieve in terms of numbers and then the time.